Carolyn Doobie here, and welcome to February's Colorful Jelly Print Party. And I know you're thinking, that doesn't look like a jelly plate, and you're absolutely correct. Those are pan pastels that I'm using there with a the stencil. That stencil is called Use Your Words from over at Stencil Girl. And what I'm doing here is creating a page with lots of pan pastel and color, because I'm going to be sealing that with the jelly plate later on in the video. Now I'd like to say that this idea was all mine, but it most certainly was not. This came from Mary Ann over at scrappy sticky inky mess.wordpress.com and of course I'll have links down to her. She gave me permission to put this into the video so that you could see it in action. I'm doing a whole piece of paper here. Of course you could be doing a tag, you could be doing a smaller piece of card, any way that or anything that you put pan pastels on. But one of the things about pan pastels is that they're a pastel and there's nothing really holding them to the paper. So that if you take a Kleenex or a paper towel or something and wipe it across it, you actually pick up some of that color. And that's really great for blending and getting all sorts of beautiful effects, but it makes it really hard to prevent smudges and smears and that kind of thing. So how do you seal it? There are things called um, fixative sprays and aerosol things that you can spray. I've never been very happy with them. Probably wasn't you probably didn't use them correctly because I do that with all sorts of stuff, but it just didn't work for me. What did work for me though was the jelly plate. For this technique, you probably want a really clean jelly plate. And since I have usually a very messy jelly plate, I actually cleaned this off and I'm getting the last little remnants here with a piece of packing tape pulling up little flecks and bits here. And because of the way I use the jelly plate, I usually leave the plastic on the very back side of a jelly plate so it doesn't stick to things all on my work surface or pick up odds and ends that way. So what that means is, is that back side is absolutely like factory clean back there still because I've never used paint on it. So what I might do is use one side for using the gel medium and to seal things like pan pastel and the other side for paint and then I won't have to work that hard cleaning it. I'm using Blickrylic gel medium although any gel medium will work I really like using this kind for it because it simply comes in a bottle that I can squirt it out in and I'm putting less on here than I would if I was say putting paint on because I want this to be a fairly thin application. I'm gonna brayer it on just as if it was paint and if I put too much gel medium on this, what it creates are ridges and ripples, um, adds a lot of texture to it. So if you want texture, put a lot of gel medium on this thing. And then I'm just cleaning off my brayer because it's pretty much just like using clear paint here. The next thing I have to think about is where it's going to print on my paper since I'm just using a piece of paper that's larger than the plate. And I wanna make sure that the whole area with the words or the stencil area is sealed I'm gonna put that corner down and this is just like if there was paint on it pushing it down to make sure I get good contact everywhere and when I think I have that then I'm gonna peel it up and as I peel it up what I should see is something is shiny because it's been sealed and I don't have a lot of random flex or specs because I really worked hard to clean off that jelly plate for you guys it is only sealed where the jelly plate was. So I have a little bit here that is not sealed. And I can just use some scissors to trim it off or I can use a paper trimmer when it's dry. If I wanted to use the large 12 by 14 jelly plate, then this whole piece of paper would fit on it. And the size of it being just a little bit smaller than a piece of paper really called to me to mount it onto paper. And now it has a nice white border all the way around it. And this month for February's colorful jelly print party, I have a little something different for us this month for how we can share our prints. I found Google Plus. And one of the things that I really like about having a community in Google Plus is that everybody can share what they're making, whether they have a blog or not, whether or not they have a Flickr account, and anyone with a blog or a Flickr account or that's doing a YouTube video, you can also share that too so that everybody can share here. So of course down below I'll have a link to get you right to the community and you just click that join community red button up there and you're in. Once you've joined the community, then you can navigate around the community on the left. Right now what you're seeing are all posts, that's everything that's been posted in the community, and you can choose what you want to see. Like let's say you want to see 
the Jelly Party and Prints. You're going to click on that and now you'll see only the Jelly Party and Prints category. And if you're one of those people that likes to know what the rules are to things, there is a category here called Guidelines and you can click on that and you can see what the general rules are to the community and there aren't many of them. If you want to see your play, in this place, your play is really our play where you want to share any blog posts, any pieces of art you've done from ceramics to fiber art to paper crafting to art journaling to jelly printing, everything is welcome here. This is all about being creative, about encouraging others and being encouraged. When you're new to the group, if you want to click on introduce yourself, that's where you can introduce yourself to the group. So let's say I was new to the group and I'm in the introduce yourself section. I'm going to click on there and now I can type whatever I want, let people know what I do, maybe add a photo of my work, I can add a link to my blog, perhaps share a video that I've made, and then I click share. Of course it says in there introduce yourself and then I'll click share. And I'm going to click cancel because I've already introduced myself. Another place that you can look on here is how to use Google+. If you're new to Google+, and you're not sure how this all works, I've been adding little bits here and there to help people out. And really this is helping me out because I'm learning it too. So if you're not comfortable with Google Plus yet, don't worry, we're all learning it together. One of the things right on there is about how to get the notifications off or on to reduce or increase the number of emails that you get. So those are little tips and hints in there. It's also a place where people have asked questions about how do I use Google Plus or what does this mean? So as you're learning about Google+, you can also ask your questions there and get some help. But what if you have a question that's related to art? Well, we have a category called questions, and this is related to art and other things. So if you post your question there, then everybody will see it. But now back to the jelly party part, because that's what this thing's all about. Starting with this month's colorful jelly print party, Instead of having the link up on my blog with Mr. Linky, we are going to be doing it in Google Plus in the communities, a colorful playground. And I realize for many of you, it is learning something new. So I really appreciate you taking this leap with me and the learning it with me. What I've learned so far, I have really enjoyed because you'll notice I don't see a lot of ads. I can control what I'm seeing. And if I want to see it, I get to see it. Looking forward to seeing you over at A Colorful Playground.